music, music, From music, Saigon, music, this is the American music, Forces music, Vietnam music, Network, music, where the hits music, just keep on coming. Music power! Gene Weed program, the Monday edition, Bob Kingsley and for Gene Weed, get things out of the way, a little sweet soul music. This is Arthur Carly to kick it off. Do you like good music? Back a few years, by a lot of about every one of the soul, well, not all of them, but a good majority of the heavy, heavyweight soul artists, so it were. This is the Gene Wade Monday program, Bob Kingsley with the music. Now, 707 Music Power Time, good evening to you. By golly, it's a Monday night, the 23rd day of February, 1970. I'll teach you to eat candy before I go there. This week, number two. Last week, number nine. Eddie Holman. Hey there, lonely baby. Hey there, lonely girl.
network that plays much more music 24 hours a day. Ah. First edition, and I just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. Get on it! Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, what condition my condition was in. I woke up this morning with the sun down shining in. I found my mind in a brown paper bag, but then I tripped on a cloud and fell to eight miles high. I tore my mind on a jagged sky. I just dropped in to see what the my condition was in. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, what condition my condition was in. I pushed my soul in a deep dark hole and then I followed it. condition was in. This thing just knocked me out of my mind last year when it came out. Tommy James and Sean Bell, Crystal Blue Persuasion, at 714 Monday night, the 23rd day of February, 1970, in the Republic of Vietnam, from your co-program, Good Evening, Vietnam. Thank you. 
back about a year ago. Tommy James, Sean Jones, Crystal Blue Persuasion at 718, your go show time. AFBN News, keeping the American forces totally informed 24 hours a day with reports from around the world. This is Frank Mariano. This is Kenneth Gale. This is Jim Kincaid. This is Charles D. Arno. This is Don Baker. This is Sean Wizzleman. The AFBN News Department collects news from around the world and directs it to you as it happens. Stay totally informed and depend on AFBN News. Dennis Kahane, Washington. John McDavid. This is Tony Hughes in Hong Kong. This is George Mason sitting in Guatemala City. This is David Kohler in Paris. This is Joe Barnes in New York. Joe Walker, CBS News, New York. This is Ron Baker in San Francisco. Don Folsom at the White House. Andrew Myers in Tel Aviv. This is AFBN News. This is a hit from Marvin Gaye. Got to send this one out to Air Force Sergeant Bill Millard and all the guys in the Trang Tandem tonight. 719 Music Power Time on the Big BN out of Saigon. Get you from the AFBN State Science Survey. Now, 721. The American Forces Vietnam Network, in cooperation with the Veterans Administration, presents You Owe It To Yourself, a program to answer your questions about Hello. Veterans Administration benefits. I'm presently taking a correspondence course under the GI Bill. When I finish it, can I take another one? Yes, but I'd like to caution you. The GI Bill permits you to change courses only one time. So if you complete a correspondence course and then take a second correspondence course, you will have used all of your entitlement under the GI Bill. If you have a particular question concerning VA benefits, write the Veterans Administration representative here of the 377th Combat Support Group, Tom Sanud Airbase, APO in Country 96307. Reminder, 905 tonight. You can hear all of your favorite oldies on Million Dollar Music with Army Specialist Tony Lyons. Now 722. Got my main woman, Janice. Janice Joplin. Try, honey.
bit old. I can't cast them off as the track. on the soul to let you pour out. That scatter shovel and then try, baby, just a little bit hungry. Now, 7.25 as we pick them up and lay them down with their heads heavy tight. Say goodbye, say goodbye to daddy now. Say goodbye, cause he had to go away. Richard Spencer sings with Winston. Say goodbye to Papa, baby. It seems like a lifetime ago that I heard those words. And I saw my wife and little girl standing there waving me goodbye. I'll never forget how I wanted to reach out and grab them and run away. But I knew I had to leave them, no matter how bad I wanted to stay. Take you back one year ago with the sound of yesteryear.
from Saigon, this is the American Forces Vietnam Network, where the hits just keep on coming. It's now exactly 7.31 from your goal program on a Monday night with Army Specialist Tom Watson as we feature stateside hits till 9 o'clock tonight from ASBN. <laughs> from your gold program. Chu Hoi means open arms. The Chu Hoi program has given the former enemy an opportunity to become a useful citizen. Each Chu Hoi returnee means less firepower for the enemy, and you can do your part. Treat the returnees well, and be sure to issue a receipt for any weapons turned in. For continued success, it's your responsibility to know and understand the rules of the Chu Hoi program. Like this right here, good song. Brand new from Santana, Evil Woman. Gotta change evil ways. Good evening to you. Go program on the radio to 9 o'clock tonight.
That song going from chairman of the board from the AFBN State Science Survey. Call oh, baby, just give me a little bit more time. 741 is your time. 905 tonight, your favorite oldies with Army Specialist Tony the Tiger Lions a Million Dollar Music. Right now, I got Johnny Taylor. Get it! Been working all day like I'm doing time. Now, Boomer, say you got to do some more time. If the Boomer comes to bed, I can't wait to Oh, 
with your old lady. Call Log Bones going home to get him at 745 Music Power Time on a Monday night 2013 of Feb 1970 from your go program Army Specialist Tom Watson playing a heavy hit till 9 o'clock tonight. Speaking of heavy things and heavy people. something, it's not spending. If you put a lime in it, it's not intoxicating. Now, here is the woman who does not think of men all the time, but when she thinks, she thinks of men. Here is Helen Trump. Around the corner and up your street, we bring you another chapter in the return of Helen Trump. A chapter entitled, She Was a Miss by a Mile. Let's stroll down the path and enter Helen's house. The little house that has a terrific view, if you don't look out the window. Yes, there's Helen now. A real chug-chug girl. A go-go girl who is past 30. Her lower lip is thrust out in a provocative pout. Our gal Tuesday Wednesday has been giving her trouble again. She has been flirting with Helen's latest romantic interest, C. Dewey Detterwick, the first man to strike oil at Lakeside with a four iron. The first time Helen met C. Dewey, she suspected he had something up his sleeve, probably a lace hanky. But as she grew to know him better, she realized that he was really the Tarzan type. His eyes swung from limb to limb. What Helen does not know is that Dewey has only three weeks to live. Then his wife is coming back from Palm Springs. What Dewey likes about Tuesday, Wednesday is beyond Helen, and quite a bit beyond Tuesday, Wednesday. But then it is obvious that Dewey is not the intellectual type. He's the kind of man who thinks a zebra is the largest a woman can buy. As these thoughts passed through Helen's mind, she became aware of strong arms encircling her, and then a voice racked with seething emotions speaks to her. Oh, Helen. Oh, Helen. You ravishing temptress. You must accept my, my affection, my devotion. And, Helen, please don't believe all of the rumors you hear about me. My wife never understood me. It was a good thing she didn't. Why, she gave me one night each week to go out with the boys. But I was too smart to waste it on boys. And so, friends, we've come to the close of another chapter in the romance of Helen Trump. A chapter that has left us with this lesson. A career girl's mind moves her ahead, while a starless mind moves her behind. Be with us again tomorrow when this program, Helen Trump, again asks the question, can a woman after 35 find love and romance? When you were born, I'll just bet you that your old man started telling the neighbors what kind of college graduate you're going to be. And your mom probably started saving some of her kitchen money for your education there. And believe it or not, old Uncle Sam, yes, the man with the beard, wants you. 
and not that way, to complete your education, too. It's called the G.I. Bill, and it's available to you if you just open your mouth and ask for it. Got four good-looking babes going to sock it to you, and they have the sweet inspiration. Come on, baby, lay it on me. Gotta find a brand new lover. You're cooking for a Monday, baby. You're cooking. Gotta find a brand new lover. I'm tired. Home. It's no fun being home all alone. Good evening to all the airborne guys with the 101st Airborne Division. Good evening, guys. <laughs> Power Radio. Yes, sir. That's all I have to say, one. <laughs> one ten soldiers, survey song 18 from a group called the Original Cast. This is most requested from the Power of AFDM.
This is Radio 77 AM and 99.9 FM, AFVN Quinyon. The best protection against malaria is not getting bitten by a mosquito in the first place. Of course, you should still take the pills, but there's more. Roll down your shirt sleeves and button up your collar in the evening. Use plenty of insect repellent and sleep under a mosquito net. Finally, take both those pills, the big orange one weekly and the little white one daily. Inconvenience, yes, but a sight better than malaria. It's 20 hundred hours. French president plans a U.S. visit. A reaction and concern. President George Pompidou of France leaves Paris today on his way to a state visit in the United States, and that's sure to be marked with both criticism and praise. Mr. Pompidou is most likely to draw the praise for his country's shift toward more pro-American policies, but he could be in for a tough time concerning the French position on the Middle East. In principle, it's neutral, but in practice, has often seemed more pro-Arab. Israel's premier Golda Meir has begun a series of meetings with the ambassadors of nations whose airlines have flights to that Jewish nation. The meetings follow announcements from seven international airlines that they were stopping freight and mail shipments to Israel until security arrangements could be tightened. Mrs. Mayer says the airlines are capitulating to Arab terrorists whom she blames for the crash of a Swiss jetliner Saturday that killed 47 persons. United Press International reports tonight military sources in Laos say the North Vietnamese forces that conquered the Laotian plain of Jars over the weekend apparently plan to increase their holdings further. The communist troops attacked a government outpost some 10 miles northwest of the plane yesterday. But military officials in Vientiane say it's significant because it shows the communists are interested in advancing beyond the plane. That a United Press International report. Soviet military leaders are marking Armed Forces Day with statements that pass up Red China and name the United States, Israel, and West Germany as the main threats to peace. 
An article in Pravda made no mention of the Sino-Soviet border flights that occurred during the bulk of last year. Democrats say the $1 billion, $300 million surplus in President Nixon's budget will probably vanish, and it isn't big enough to fight inflation anyway, in their estimation. That's the word from a party task force, and their report says the defense budget should be cut another $5 billion as a possible blow to inflation. Action has come on several fronts after Saturday's crash of that Swiss Air jetliner. UPI correspondent Roger Norum reports from London. The reaction and concern continues to mount over the plane crash in Switzerland that killed all 47 persons on board. Airlines are in some cases banning freight to Israel and increasing their security measures at international airports. The public who fly in the planes are also taking recourse. The Scandinavian airline, SAS, canceled their weekly flight from Copenhagen to Tel Aviv when only half of the 124 book passengers showed up at the airport. A company official said they didn't even cancel. They just stayed away because they were afraid. Security has dramatically increased at virtually every European airport that handles flights heading towards the Mideast. Two British airlines imposed freight embargoes on flights to Tel Aviv. All mail, even food, is being scrutinized. The airport police at Rome are using x-ray machines to check all baggage and mail. The pilots are voicing renewed concern, too. The flight captain, who safely landed his plane in Frankfurt, Germany, after an explosion in just 14 minutes before the Swiss air crash, feels all flights to the Mideast should be banned. In Helsinki, the president of the International Airline Pilots Association is urging pressure on the airlines and airports to tighten security and, if necessary, conduct bodily searches. The pressure is indeed mounting, and here and elsewhere all agree that something must be done to ensure safe air travel, but there is disagreement on how drastic that something should be. This is Roger Norham in London. National Guardsmen are on patrol in the campus of Voorhees College in Denmark, South Carolina. The predominantly black school has been closed for the second time in less than a year by student protests. More than 250 guardsmen and South Carolina highway patrolmen sealed off the campus at dawn yesterday after a three-day student boycott and the refusal of some students to leave when the buildings were closed. The five men convicted in the Chicago riot conspiracy trial have asked their supporters to concentrate on efforts to get them appealed on bond. Judge Julius Hoffman, calling the five dangerous men, denied them bond when he made the sentences. In Madison, New Jersey, Senator Strom Thurmond was pelted with marshmallows last night when he defended Judge Hoffman at Drew University. Senator Thurmond yelled, you're a bunch of cowards if you don't listen to what I have to say. Congress faces debate this week over programs to feed hungry children and the threat of another presidential veto. But those debates may be interrupted by the visit of French President Georges Pompidou. Representative Bertrand Podell of New York has urged a boycott of the speech protesting French sales of jet planes to Libya. And the Senate is scheduled to debate a bill proposing a sharp increase in spending for the federal school lunch program with a formula to states to contribute as well as localities. And that's AFVN News to this hour. Army Specialist Phil Henry reporting. AFVN News, compiled from commercial and military news agencies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the beat goes on. Just like a child, gotta set your heart to believe me there. But you don't even try to let yourself believe what you feel. So I hold out my hand and I'll be your friend. You don't have to be mine.
a group called the Clique on the Big 77, starting us out on the Monday edition of the Music Machine program. I'm Army Specialist John R. Samira, and from now till 9 o'clock, I've got a lot of music, and don't you forget it. Clarence Carter coming up here next with a little bit of soul power. Snatching it back is the name of the song. How can I get your love when you keep on snatching it back? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, girl. How can I get your love when you keep on snatching it back? That's what I want to know right now, girl. Forces Vietnam Network. How can I get your love, baby, if you keep on snatching it back? Time-wise, 10 minutes on the gone side of the hour of 8 o'clock on a thing we call the Music Machine Program. Buy a bun, buy a bun, buy a bun today. Buy a bun, buy a bun, make your savings pay. United States, people are showing us their Series E savings bonds and showing them proudly. Why? Because they're long on the draw, drawing interest, that is, and short on the filter. They filter out your financial worries before you know it. My husband buys bonds, too. <laughs> you could call us a two-bond family. If you're saving more but enjoying it less, then switch to the brand of savings that gives you the most for your money. It doesn't come in fancy gold wrapping. It doesn't give away coupons, but it does come in different sizes. United States Savings Bonds, America's favorite brand. If you're already a bond buyer, ask your dealer about Freedom Shares for added enjoyment. This is the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band on the Big 77. Name of the song is some of Shelley's Blues. I think you're going to like it. Me just one more time the reason why you must leave. Tell me once more why you're sure you don't need me. Tell me again, but don't think you convince me.
Army Specialist John R. Smear, and you're listening to my thing, The Music Machine. On a Monday evening, it's the 23rd of February, 1970. Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, Grayson is here, in sound, some of Shelley's Blues. Remember from Da Nang to the Mekong Delta, there's not another like the Big 77. Our radio emanating from Quinion. AFCN. And the hips keep coming on. Very pretty young lady, very talented too. Name is Dusty Springfield. She's singing about a brand new me. This is my same old car and my same old shoes. I was the same old me with the same old blues. Then you touch my life just by holding my hand. Now I look in the mirror and see brand new girl. I got a brand new wall, a brand new smile. Since I met you, baby. And much more music time, 816 in the Big V and the sounds of one Dusty Springfield. There's a brand new me, and it's all thanks to you, boy. <laughs> Don't lose your shot record. Get the point? He did. Two fellas by the name of Sam and Dave on the Music Machine program. They're going to sing Ooh, Ooh, and Ooh. There's no need to fear, and as long as I'm here, I'm no number. One soul man I start to humming When I see her coming I can do it You know that I can We will do the Ooh, ooh, ooh Ooh, ooh, ooh Ooh, ooh, ooh Ooh, ooh, ooh 
Remember, if you can't afford an R&R, &R, stop in at Red Beach for a fun-filled day of boating, water skiing, and surfing. It's the next best thing to R&R, &R, and it's right here in Quinion. Power Radio. Love those girls. Mm -hmm. Miss Bobby Gentry with a ballad of fancy. I remember it all very well. Looking back, it was the summer I turned 18. We lived in a one-room, run-down shack on the outskirts of New Orleans. We didn't have money for food or rent, to say the least we were hard-pressed. Then Mom spent every last penny we had to buy me a dancing dress. Mama washed and combed and curled my hair, and she painted my eyes and lips. And then I stepped into a satin dancing dress that was split on the side, cleaned up to my hips. It was red velvet trim and it fit me good And staring back from the looking glass Was a woman where a half grown kid had stood Here's your one chance pants don't let me down Here's your one chance pants don't let me down Mama dad a little bit of perfume on my neck And she kissed my cheek And I saw the tears well up in her troubled eyes When she started to speak she looked at a pitiful shack and then she looked at me and took a ragged breath. Your paws run off and I'm real sick and the baby's gonna starve to death. She handed me a heart shaped locket that said to thine own self be true. And I shivered as I watched a roach crawl across the toe of my high heel shoe. It sounded like somebody else that was talking, asking, Mama, what do I do? And just be nice to the gentleman, fancy, and they'll be nice to you. Here's your one chance, fancy, don't let me down. Here's your one chance, fancy, don't let me down. Don't forget me for what I do. But if you want out, well, it's up to you. Now get on now, girl, you better stop moving uptown. Well, that was the last time I saw my mom, and I left that rickety shack. Cause the welfare people came and took the baby mom died and I ain't been back But the wheels of fate had started to turn And me there was no way out And it wasn't very long till I knew exactly what my mom had been talking about I did what I had to do but I made myself a solemn vow That I was gonna be a lady someday though I didn't know when I I couldn't see spending the rest of my life with my head hung down in shame I might have been born just plain white trash, but fancy was my name. Here's your one chance, fancy, don't let me down. Here's your one chance, fancy, don't let me down. It wasn't long after a benevolent man took me in off the street. And one week later I was pouring his tea in a five-room hotel suite. Yes, you were. Charmed a king, a congressman, and an occasional aristocrat. And I got me a Georgia mansion in an elegant New York townhouse flat. And I ain't done that. Yeah. Here's your one Hypocrites that would call me bad And criticize my mama for turning me out No matter how little we had And though I ain't had to worry about nothing for now Fifteen years I can still hear the desperation in my poor mama's voice ringing in my ear Here's your one chance, fancy, don't let me down Here's your one chance, fancy, don't let me down Lord, forgive me for what I do But if you want Miss Bobby Gentry on the Big 77, here's your one chance fancy, don't let your mama down. Oh, come on, honey, bring in that money. By the clock on the wall, it's 23 and a half minutes past the hour of 8 o'clock. You're listening to Power Radio, AFVN and Quinion, broadcasting with a big 10,000 watts. Next up, Jay and the Americans, walking in the rain. I want her, I need her, and someday, someway, whoa, I'll meet her. She'll be kind of shy. I'm 
night in the big VN and you're listening to the American Forces Vietnam Network. Say, the next time you're in Quincy Compound, drop in at the Red Cross. It's a real gas and there's a million things for you to do. You just heard from Jay and the Americans walking in the rain. Yeah, like I was telling you, baby, we got 3,000 men in my unit. We got nine tanks. We got 12 APCs. Hey, come here and sit on my lap a little closer. Hey, bartender, bring me another beer. Hold everything. You might be impressing that little lady with what you're saying, but you might also be alerting the VC. Be security conscious. The secret you give away might cost you your life. A little bit of soul sound here from a group called the Jackson Five. This was number one all over Vietnam for two straight weeks. The name of the song is I Want You Back. 837 right now in the big VN.
listening to the Music Machine program, and I'm your host, John R. Smear. Remember, my business is your pleasure, so make my job easy. Have a blast and listen to the Big 77. The Jackson 5 hailing from Gary, Indiana. Baby, I want you back. Don't forget, for a cheeseburger that can't be beat, stop in at the Quinion USO. Tell them Big John said yeah. We're going to hear from Mark Lindsay now, a thing called Arizona. It's kind of pretty. I know you'll love it. She must belong to San Francisco. She must have lost her way. Posting a poster of Poncho and Cisco, one California day. She said she believes in a Robin Hood and Brotherhood and colors of green and gray. And all you can do is laugh at her. Doesn't anybody know how to pray? You're acting like a teeny bopper runaway child And scrape off the paint from the face of a little town saint talented fellow by the name of Mark Lindsay, the guy that sings with Paul Revere and the Raiders. Arizona, take off your rainbow shades and take a look at things the way they really are. Hey, attention out there, hobby hounds, the Red Crash, the Red Crash, the Red Craft Beach Shop. No, the Red Beach Craft Shop. <laughs> we finally got that out. Anyway, it's now open for business. Check them out. Chances are they've got something that you want, so get it. Your radio screen has lots of brightly colored vertical and horizontal lines in the picture. It's probably Army Specialist Ron McNulty taking you for a ride on the 77th Street subway. It may not be the best radio show you've ever seen, but simply stated, the subway sound is superbly stimulating. and look at you, uh, very groovy sound of a group called The Meters. This is really cool. It's an instrumental thing like they always do, and it's called Look a Pie Pie. 26 minutes on the shy side of the hour of 9 o'clock, and you're listening to the American Forces Vietnam Network, where the hits just keep on coming. <laughs> Oh, 
Soul sound of the meters. Look at you, look at you. Ah, the name of the song is Look a Pie Pie. You're listening to the Music Machine Get Together, and I'm Army Specialist John R. Smear here at the Gear, and I do my thing every Monday through Friday between 10 after 8 and 9 o'clock. And speaking of time, right now we're on the upside of the hour, and in about 23 minutes it will be 9 o'clock, and we'll have to go. But in the meantime, stick around, and we're going to groove out on some more good music, all right? It's the inside. A group called the Spiral Staircase. They do a lot of groovy stuff, but I think this is their best effort to date. She is ready.
is the Spiral Staircase, and the name of the song is She Is Ready, and that's kind of groovy sound, and she's so cool that she could be a lover in the teacher's school. No, I think it was a teacher in a lover's school. Anyway, we'll play this jingle and try to figure it out in the meantime. Say, have you ever thought about extending your tour of duty in the Republic of Vietnam? Nope, not in the last five minutes. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a joke, get it? Yeah, I got it, but did you know you'd get a 30-day leave anywhere in the free world if you extend for six months or more? I give up, did I? Okay, wise guy, I'll bet you didn't know it's a free leave and doesn't count against your leave record. Well, now that's a cow of a different color. You mean horse, don't you? Whatever turns you on. And here's something that turns everybody on. Mr. Joe Conker, she came in through the bathroom window, y'all. Came in through the bathroom window. Mr. Joe Cocker, she came in through the bathroom window. That's exactly what happened. Say, are you feeling down and out? Well, lose the blues with music and news. Coming your way on the Big 77. We've got a little bit of instrumental music power coming up here. A group called the Electric Indian. And they're quite a group. Matter of fact, they laid aside their bows and arrows and uh, decided to play this song. It's called The Land of a Thousand Dances. 17 minutes before the hour of 9 o'clock in Quinion right now.
know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, so why not take plenty and get them developed at the film center in the Quinyon, Maine PX, another fine Vietnam regional exchange facility. Okie doke. Okay, that record just ran out and it caught me right off guard. I didn't even know it was going to run out there. But we've got another one, so no sweat. These are the Isley Brothers. Bless your heart. Bless your soul. Ooh, I dig ya. Soul power. Bless your heart, but well, love me like you do. And bless your soul, too. <laughs> 13 minutes now on the shy side of 9 o'clock on the big 77. Not hard to find, right near the center of the dial. And it's got plenty of music for you. And speaking of music, here's Archie Bell and the Drills. Two in a row, soul power music. What would the world be like, y'all, if there wasn't any music? Well, 
Archie Bell and the Drells on the Music Machine program on a Monday night, 10 minutes before the hour of 9 o'clock. What would the world be like if there wasn't any music? We'll be right back after this word from the people that make it all possible. If you happen to be a talented musician or singer, then you could be in for some enjoyment as well as good experience. Special Services in Quinyon is in need of musicians and singers. If you are interested, contact the Special Services Area Entertainment Director by phone at Quinyon 3963 or 2891. It could mean a tour of Vietnam as well as special duty for you. See what I mean? They make it all possible for you to be a star, okay? Special Services right here in Quinyon. They get all kind of groovy stuff for you. Don't forget to go down there. About two years ago, this young lady did... Show me the way to San Jose. She's got another one now. I'll never fall in love again. Miss Dion Warwick. What do you get when you fall in love? A guy with a pen to thirst your love. That's what you get for your trouble. Miss Dion Warwick on the Music Machine program. I'll never fall in love again. Too many germs and you just catch cold if you kiss boys and all that kind of stuff. Say, if you need a change of pace, see your R&R officer today for six days of fun in the sun. Radio plays the sounds of a group called the Magic Christians. Here it is, come and get it, or we'll feed it to the dog. I don't know, something like that. You better hurry cause it's 
crap about the rapper, okay? Hey girl, I bet you there's someone out to get to. You'll find him anywhere, on a bus, in a bar, in a grocery store. He'll say, excuse me, have a nice new Watch out, he's the rapper. Rapper, rap, you know Blah, come up to my place for some coffee or tea, or me, or even the guy next door. I don't know. We're both in cahoots, you know. Specialist John R. Smear saying that's going to wrap it up for the Monday edition of the Music Machine program. Stay tuned for five minutes of news, after which Army Specialist Tony Lyons will be back with Million Dollar Music. All of yours on the American Forces Vietnam Network. Till tomorrow night at 10 after 8. Goodbye, gang, and hang in there, huh? Vietnam Network. This is Radio 77 AM and 99.9 .9 FM, AFVN Quinn Yon. You know, pet animals are a lot of fun, but along with that pet animal goes your responsibility. Make sure he is vaccinated. If your pet is three months of age or older, you should take him to the veterinary service in your area for his rabies shots. Remember, animals can be fun, but they can be dangerous if not properly cared for. It's 2100 hours. Eban visits West Germany. AFBN News, compiled from commercial and military news agencies. Good evening. This is Army Specialist Phil Henry. Israeli Foreign Minister Abba Ibn met with West German Foreign Minister Walter Scheel today. Ibn is the first Israeli cabinet minister to make an official visit to West Germany. Later, he'll meet with Chancellor Willy Brandt and other German officials. Security for Ibn's visit is very strict because of recent Arab terrorist activities. The following report is from the Associated Press. U.S. B-52 bombers made heavy strikes against the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Laos today for the seventh consecutive day. Informed sources say about half of the 30,000 tons of bombs dropped by the big bombers so far this month have been on supply depots and infiltration corridors in eastern Laos to cut down the movement of troops and war materials into South Vietnam. 
The sources also said about 50 B-52s made heavy raids up and down the Ho Chi Minh Trail today and yesterday, dropping 1,500 tons of explosives. That report was from the Associated Press. There was no comment on the report from official U.S. government agencies. The U.S. government has neither confirmed nor denied reports of air actions in Laos. French President Georges Pompidou flies to the U.S. today. He'll spend the night at the presidential retreat at Camp David, Maryland, and then meet tomorrow with President Nixon. And Wednesday, he's scheduled to address a joint session of Congress. Pompidou's visit, which will last nine days, was planned as a goodwill trip. But his government's decision to sell some 110 jets to Libya is likely to bring demonstrations during his visit and spoil, possibly, its public relations intentions. President Nixon has scheduled a meeting of the National Security Council for the morning. One topic is expected to be the Laotian situation. The council also is expected to review the proposed sale of jet fighters to Israel. The Indian Supreme Court may force Prime Minister Gandhi to take over foreign banks in that country. For that story, here is John Slade in New Delhi. Managers of these 13 foreign banks operating in India kept their fingers crossed last July when Prime Minister Mrs. Indira Gandhi nationalized India's 14 biggest banks. Then they heaved sighs of relief when it seemed Mrs. Gandhi had no intention of taking over foreign banks too. Now India's Supreme Court has said Mrs. Gandhi's government breached the constitution by discriminating against the 14 Indian banks selected for nationalization. Uppermost in the minds of managers of foreign banks now is the fear that Mrs. Gandhi will decide to take over all banks operating in India, including four American banks, to get round the constitutional bar on discriminatory takeovers. John Slee, New Delhi. Labor Secretary George Shultz meets with the AFL-CIO's Executive Council in closed session today. The council is expected to ask him some tough questions on President Nixon's plans for strike legislation and on the controversial Philadelphia plan for minority housing. Shultz played golf yesterday with AFL-CIO President George Meany and with other union officials. The Labor Secretary has gotten along with the union men, although they've been critical of Mr. Nixon. One Meany aide... Friendly with Schultz, said of the secretary, he happens to represent an administration we don't like. School teachers have called a statewide strike in Kentucky for today. They want salary increases and more fringe benefits. The legislature has offered the teachers a $300 raise, but they're asking for $600 spread over two years. They say their salaries average some $7,500 during the current school term, compared with an $8,500 national average. A bill aimed at halting the flow of pep pills to high school students will be introduced in the House today. The measure would impose quotas on the manufacture of the pills in the United States. In the Senate, votes are coming up on five amendments to the Southern-sponsored school lunch bill. South Dakota Democrat George McGovern, sponsor of those amendments, says they'll widen the bill's effectiveness. And he adds the present proposal favors the South and will not provide school lunches to the truly needy. An avalanche destroyed an inn in an Austrian village near Innsbruck today. Four people were killed. An official said nine persons were rescued from St. Sigmund in the Tyrolean Alps. A helicopter called to look for other survivors crashed, but apparently its crew survived. New York City police raided a Manhattan apartment last night and arrested 12 members of a white militant group which supports the Black Panthers. Police seized four guns, ammunition, three knives, and other equipment. Those arrested were members of the Patriot Party, three were women. The suspects were charged with illegal possession of weapons, interfering with police and acting in concert. Police said the raid was launched after officers saw weapons being carried into the building. And that's AFVN News to this hour. Army Specialist Phil Henry reporting. AFVN News, compiled from commercial and military news agencies. From Saigon, ladies and gentlemen, the beat goes on. One, two, three. Tell me what heaven means. 
Million Dollar Music Pal. Welcome into a Monday, brand new week, and we have the fifth dimension to go again for you here from 1969. In the fifth dimension. Good evening to you. Called Aquarius. Let the sun shine in. And the two of you. Happy, happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday, baby. 
Oldie But a Goodie, French, from 1957. Super Oldie on Million Dollar Music and the Toon Weavers. Happy, happy birthday, baby. baby. It's the world's biggest city. And this year, with Expo 70 in Japan, Tokyo will be more exciting than ever. There's the Ginza, the street that never closes down. Is music your interest? Tokyo has it. Western rock bands and ancient shotos. Shopping your passion? This city has it all. Gifts you'd find nowhere else in the world. Start planning for your R&R in Tokyo. See your R&R counselor now. And all this stuff's made in Japan, too. 9.15. The American Forces Vietnam Network, in cooperation with the Veterans Administration, presents You Owe It To Yourself, a program to answer your questions about Veterans Administration benefits. I want a job with the government when I'm discharged. How do I go about getting my five-point preference? A copy of your notice of separation, DD Form 214, is all that is needed to establish your five points preference. If you have a particular question concerning VA benefits, write the Veterans Administration representative, care of the 377th Combat Support Group, Tom Sanud Airbase. APO in country, 96307. Wonderful, wonderful. The meat goes on now from 1968. It's kind of a morbid tune, but we're going to listen to it anyway. It's a big million seller for Bobby Goldsboro back then. It's called Honey on the Big VN. See the tree, how big it's grown, but friend, it hasn't been too long. It wasn't big. I laughed at her and she got mad. The first day that she planted it was just a twig. Then the first snow came and she ran out to brush the snow away so it wouldn't die. Came running in, all excited, slipped and almost hurt herself, and I laughed till I cried. She was always young at heart, kind of dumb and kind of smart, and I loved her so. And I surprised her with a puppy, kept me up all Christmas Eve two years ago. It would sure embarrass her when I came in from working late Cause I would know That she'd been sitting there and crying Over some sad and silly late, late show And honey, I miss you
Guaranteed on Million Dollar Music for a Monday, and that's Bobby Goldsboro, of course, from 1968, and Honey, and the Angels came, and all that stuff. Okay, it's 6.20 tomorrow morning, Don Buster time, gang, you know, and that clown will get up and yell, good morning, Vietnam, and, and I'm going to punch him one of these mornings. Our special is Roger Clay Ashworth is the kid's name, and he'll be on there making music and playing records for you. music. Here we go. Could it be this song was written about Vietnam from 1967, the Buckingham Sing? Out of the dress. publication for you, the fighting man in Vietnam. Keep up with the latest in space happenings, the latest in football and basketball and all major sporting events, and of course the news that tells it like it is. That's all in today's Pacific Stars and Stripes. By the way, where's your copy right now? Point 922 on the Big V. And hey, Dick York is bewitched tomorrow evening by lovely Elizabeth Montgomery in Bewitched, and you want to miss to watch that now at 7 p.m. over the American Forces Vietnam Television Network. We're going to have some fun right now with a fellow named Tom Jones. This is Million Dollar Music. I'm Army Specialist Tony Lyons. The old American boy. It's not unusual. called It's Not Unusual. 925 is our time. This program, Helen Trump, a lot of women, 
asks the question, can a woman be too good to be true? I'm not really sure about that, but uh, Ellen Trump does her thing five times every day on the Big V. And on the Orient Express at 2.45 in the morning, and on Don Buster at 6.45, 4.45 in the afternoon on Town & Country, 7.45 on the Go Show, and then right around here on Million Dollar Music at 11.45, so be sure and catch that, friends. Don't miss it. 67 with the turtles, and we're all happy together, me and you. Go. Imagine me and you, I do. I think about you day and night. It's only right to think about the girl you love and hold her tight. So happy together. If I should call you up, invest the time. Maker, the Turtles for you from 1960 and 7. That's called Happy Together. They certainly do. This is back when Skeeter Day was just a little old bitty Skeeter. Back in 1963, the end of the world.
Peter Davis singing for you on Million Dollar Music and the End of the World. I had the pleasure a few years ago of uh, getting a thing with Skeeter Davis and some other people. And I was, uh, she is a little bitty person. She's very, very small. I was rapping to her after the thing backstage and, you know, kind of talking everything. Then her husband came up. He's kind of like a cross between Godzilla and the monster that ate Cleveland. I said, so long, folks. Our music. Big man. Big man. Big man. Big man. From Saigon, this is the American Forces Vietnam Network. Where the hits just keep on coming. Music power. So pretty, pretty, little sleepy. You love Shaggy Fat. Pull me Shaggy around my neck. And leave me anywhere. Love me free. Oh, let him go. Teddy Bear. I don't want to be a tiger. Tiger's pretty too rough. I don't want to be a lion, cause lions ain't the kind you love enough. But as a woman who be, you're a teddy bear. Put a chain around my neck and leave me anywhere. Oh, let me be, oh, let him be. Oh, baby, bear. Baby, let me be. Run you down the night Run your fingers through my hand And cuddle me real tight Let me be, oh let him be Your baby bear I don't want to be your tiger Cause tiger's way too rough I don't want to be your lion Cause lions ain't the kind you want to love and love Cause you with Elvis Presley, the former king. I guess he still is in some people's eyes. That was back in the days when he could burp in a microphone to make a million. That's Teddy Bear for you from 1957. Let's look in on an Army Special Services operation. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, building something. Is this your hobby? Yeah. Do you come to Special Services facility often? Uh, almost every day. Well, sure helps time go faster, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Hey, uh, you're almost finished there, aren't you? Uh, yeah, here, you can uh, have it. Oh, gee, thanks a billion, it's a kite. Yeah, go fly it. Special services facilities for the American forces in Vietnam are for you. Simon and Garfunkel. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again.
record right there with uh, Simon and Garfunkel, Hart and Paul, from 1965, called The Sounds of Silence. 67 now with the cow suit. Raindrops falling on her. She didn't seem to care. She sat there and smiled at me. shows the rain, the park, and other things from 1967. It's 20 minutes before 10 o'clock, and I want to remind you that tomorrow morning at 105 on the Orient Express, the man who lost in the, in the most handsome disc jockey contest, Army Specialist Paul A. Bottom. Day after day after day after day after day. And the goes on. Hi, this is James Francisco. Hello. With all the confusion of today, we can be sure of one thing, help. It will always be needed. From now until March 31st, 1970, the American Red Cross, the USO, CARE, and the United Seamen's Fund will be able to accept your contributions. Here in Vietnam, they cannot come to you. You must go to them. Visit a local installation near you and help. For the time is today. 1963 was the time for the Beach Boys and the Little Surfer Girl.
million dollar music for a monthly army specialist, Tony Lyons, from now until 11 o'clock. It goes to the Beach Boys, the little surfer girl. For sure, timer Sam. Getting down to single digits, Sam pauses to clue in HSJ of the 101st Airborne Division. Dear short timer, is there a quick way to find out another soldier's address, one who has already returned to CONUS? Dear HSJ, if your friend complied with the regulations when he went home and filled out the postal locator cards, the solution is simple. Write the OIC, USARV, APD, APO in country 96381. And they'll give you his forwarding address if one is available. If this friend was in the same division or brigade, check with the division APD first. Send your questions in care of the Army Reporter, Headquarters, Userby, APON Country, 96375. Well, thank you very much, Samuel. Uh, we're going to go on and on here right now with the, the Four Seasons. 1963 once again, it's called Walk Like a Man. season records I get all funny inside. That's called Walk Like a Man on Million Dollar Music. <laughs> Super Oldie from 1957. This is Thurston Harris. Do you remember the little bitty pretty one?
Todd, not until that. 1957, that's Thurston Harris, and that's called Little Pretty Pretty One, a million seller about two times over, I do believe, from that year. Hey, Maxwell Smart is back, I'm sorry to say. Tomorrow afternoon at 5, see Don Adams and Barbara Felden, lead control agents in search of chaos, and they always find it, gang. Get smart tomorrow at 5 on the American Forces Vietnam Television Network. Sam and Dave are going to do it to you now. I want everybody to get up off your feet and get your arms together and your hands together and give me some of that old soul. That's Sam and Dave, and we thank you, too, for being with us here on Million Dollar Music. Don't go away. we got more. The black marketeering does not pay. Recently, 14 persons were apprehended in one day, attempting to make illegal purchases of travelers' checks. These men face a possible sentence of two years' confinement at hard labor, a dishonorable discharge, total forfeiture of all pay and allowances, and reduction to the lowest grade. This is part of McVie's continuing effort to eliminate currency manipulation become involved in the illegal purchase of traveler's checks. It weakens the struggling economy of Vietnam, and it's not worth two years of your life. You ain't wrong, you know. You'd be making little rocks out of big rocks, too. You guys just never seem to get enough of this song, and I'm right with you on it. From 1968, these are the cream, sunshine of your love. It's getting me a dawn.
sunshine of your love. And in 1968, this was a very, very big instrumental. Million seller for Mr. Paul Murray out the orchestra. It's called Love is Blue.
post office designated an East German official, Dr. Gerhard Schüssler, to meet at that hour, day, and place with whomever Mr. Brandt chose to discuss a possible summit meeting between Chancellor Brandt and Prime Minister Stoke. This does not necessarily mean that Brandt and Stoke, in fact, will meet, for the negotiating positions of Bonn and East Berlin are far apart. Mr. Brandt wants the two Germanys to conclude an agreement outlawing the use of force and then move on to humanize relations within the divided country. Mr. Stove says negotiations should focus on a treaty in which Bonn would grant diplomatic recognition to Communist East Germany. Next step is for Saal and Schuster to seek a formula that would bring about an historic all-German summit, the first since World War II. This is Harry Ellis in Bonn. Top Soviet military leaders have marked Army-Navy Day in Moscow with articles vowing combat readiness to meet an alleged Western threat, but they made no mention of China. In his traditional Order of the Day message, Marshal Andrei Gruchko repeated familiar attacks on U.S. policy in Vietnam, Israeli policy in the Middle East, and an alleged threat from West Germany. The defense minister added, considering the complicated nature of the international situation, we show constant concern about strengthening the defensive might of the country. Senate Majority Leader Mike Mansfield says the Nixon administration should lay all its cards on the table before asking Congress to approve an expanded ABM system. Mansfield says Defense Secretary Laird will be questioned on the need for the system at a closed session tomorrow. Mansfield says the Senate Armed Services Committee and Defense Appropriations Subcommittee session will want to know the full cost of a thin system and of a thick system. Attorneys for the Chicago 7 are hoping to get the men out on bail as early as Wednesday. Defense lawyers approached the Court of Appeals with a bail request on Saturday, and prosecution lawyers have until 1 o'clock Wednesday afternoon to oppose the bid. One of the lawyers, John Tucker, says precedents are all in our favor, and he adds if it were not for the political climate of the whole thing, there would be no question on the issuance of bonds. The long congressional battle over that HEW appropriations bill promises to drag on even further, as we hear in this report from UPI's Dennis Kahane in Washington. The possibility of a second presidential veto of the HEW appropriation bill became apparent as Welfare Secretary Robert Finch warned Congress that he would urge such action unless its spending levels are cut further. The measure passed by the House Thursday totals $19.4 billion. That's $896 million over the president's original budget request. It exceeds Mr. Nixon's proposed compromise by $447 million. Finch wants the spending level cut or a provision inserted in the bill to permit the president to hold back some of the spending. In a letter to Senator Warren Magnuson, chairman of the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee, which must consider the measure, Finch also asked the Senate to delete the prohibitions of federally ordered school busing written into the House version of the bill. Dennis Kahane, Washington. Four Democratic members of the House Select Committee on Crime are expected to offer a bill soon in Washington that would impose maximum quotas on the production of pet pills. The move is designed to curb the flow of pet pills to high school students and to others who use them illegally. At least one committee Republican objects to the quotas as undue government control on drug companies. And also the controversial birth control pill hearings are due to resume tomorrow after a recess marked by political infighting among factions of the sponsoring committees. Last month's sessions produced sensational testimony before the Select Small Business Committee subpanel emphasizing suspected harmful effects of birth control pills. Testimony produced complaints that the witness list had been stacked against the pill. Former Alabama Governor George Wallace and Mississippi Democratic Senator John Stennis spoke out yesterday against integration plans involving busing, but former Vice President Humphrey said it's sometimes justified to break up segregation. Two southern states have passed laws supporting freedom of choice school integration plans while banning forced busing of children. Two others are considering similar laws, and they're all patterned after a law in New York State. For the second time in less than a year, the South Carolina National Guard was sent to Vorkhees College, a small, predominantly Negro school which has a giant share of troubles. Phil Jones of CBS reports. More than 200 South Carolina National Guardsmen responding to a request from boarding college officials moved onto the campus at 6 this morning. Only two of the more than 700 students were still on campus. They were arrested for trespassing. The All-Negro College, supported by the Episcopal Church, was closed last Friday after disruption of classes. Black students have two demands. The ouster of the Board of Trustees Chairman, who is white, 
and the rehiring of four Negro teachers whose contracts have been dropped for next year. National Guardsmen were stationed outside the home of acting president Dr. Harry Graham today, while a couple miles off campus, militant students were organized. The majority of faculty members are white people, and we feel like four new colleges is turning into a white institution. And the question here before us is like, who gonna control our education? Whether we're gonna let white folks control it or black people. And the students at Boy Youth College are taking a position that black people gonna control our education. We'd like to uh, denounce Governor McNair for again sending troops on our campus into our black community for the second time in less than one year. We feel that the problems at our campus can be solved within the community. Uh, we don't know why the governor is sending troops on the campus and we, we don't feel uh, good about this at all. For weeks, there have been rumors that Voorhees College might never reopen. The acting president denies these rumors, but is now admitting that at least at this point, he doesn't have the answers on how to solve this present crisis. And he is only saying that it is his intention to reopen this college sometime. Phil Jones, CBS News, Denmark, South Carolina. Democratic Senator George McGovern of South Dakota says Southern-sponsored school lunch legislation is grossly inadequate to feed America's poor and hungry school children. McGovern has offered five amendments that are expected to be voted on soon, and they're aimed at broadening the base of the program and increasing its funding. McGovern has opposition from the bill's sponsor, Georgia Democrat Herman Talmadge. Talmadge says the legislation is designed to make lunches available to every school child in America, but Senator McGovern disputes that, claiming it favors southern schools and fails to take feeding programs to what he calls the truly needy in the nation's school children. The Kentucky Education Association has called a statewide teacher strike for today, but not all teachers are reported sympathetic to what would be the second stoppage of teaching in state history. The KEA is chief spokesman for some 32,000 teachers and claims 27,000 or more will be off the job. For some of Kentucky's 700,000 public school children, today is already a holiday since the state leaves it up to each school board to decide whether to observe Washington's birthday. The issue is involving higher teacher pay and fringe benefits from the legislature. The president and board of governors of the American Bar Association have proposed a major study of the nation's prison systems. A 15-member commission to examine corrections problems and promote immediate changes would be formulated if the expected consent of the ABA's House of Delegates is forthcoming. President Bernard Siegel says a major objective would be to find alternatives to prison in keeping certain convicted men out of what Siegel termed schools of crime. And Freedom's Foundation, which gives thousands of awards annually to exemplary Americans who have achieved national recognition, was the recipient of a surprise distinction during today's ceremonies. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin presented the Foundation with a miniature American flag which had been aboard Apollo 11 on its historic lunar landing mission. Aldrin attended the awards presentation to accept a special plaque on behalf of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration for its strides in America's space program. The honor was for the history-making 12 months in which men three times roared into space, once to circle the moon, twice to land for lunar exploration and return safely. NASA shared the limelight with 44 others singled out this year by the foundation. Not all were present. The highest honor, the $5,000 George Washington Award, went to an 18-year-old Florida boy for organizing a Youth for Decency rally. Mike Levesque of Hialeah, Florida, is the youngest person ever to receive that distinction. He was picked for his leadership in a movement which rallied more than 30,000 rather young persons last March in Miami's Orange Bowl. And that's AFVN News to this hour. Army Specialist Phil Henry reporting. AFVN News, compiled from commercial and military news agencies. You're listening to the American Forces Vietnam Network, where we guarantee information, education, and entertainment 24 hours a day. Army Specialist Jim Amrod. Navy Journalist Ron Smith. Army Specialist Roger O'Connor. Army Specialist Paul A. Bottoms. Army Specialist Roger Clay Ashley. Army Specialist Tom Watson. Army Sergeant Bill Clark. Army Specialist Tony Lyon. Marine Corporal Steve Rutt. These are the guys that get it together on the American Forces Vietnam Network. AFV Force with Army Specialist Larry Green. Good evening. Ron Ceruto wins in San Antonio. The Bullets finally whip the Knicks and another award for Hank Aaron. But first, little-known driver Pete Hamilton of Dedham, Massachusetts, charged from behind and won the $205,000 Daytona 500-mile stock car race. The 28-year-old Hamilton overtook David Pearson in the stretch.
and beat the veteran from Spartanburg, South Carolina by three quarters of a car length. Hamilton averaged better than 149 miles an hour in the race around the dangerous Daytona International Speedway in Florida. He never had finished higher than fifth in a Grand National event, but today he earned $44,850. Before Hamilton made his late charge, Pearson and Charlie Glatzbach of Georgetown, Indiana, took turns exchanging the lead. Glatzbach led after the first 100 miles. Pearson was in front after 200 miles. Glatzbach regained the lead after 250, and Pearson was ahead of the 300 and 400 mile marks. Bobby Allison of Hueytown, Alabama, wound up third, and Glatzbach finished fourth. He was heading toward a possible victory when a tire went out of balance and he was forced into the pits. Then his crew forgot to return his gas cap, and the officials sent Glatzbach back to the sidelines for the precious seconds. Caution flags fell often during the race, and at one point the average speed slipped to 134 miles an hour. Cale Yarborough of Timmonsville, South Carolina, set a record qualifying speed of better than 194 miles an hour. And early in the race, Yarborough was zooming along in front at better than 180 miles an hour. However, an engine problem forced him to the sidelines. Other top contenders forced out by mechanical difficulties included Richard Petty, three-time Indianapolis 500 winner A.J. Foyt, Buddy Baker, and Donnie Allison. Defending champion Leroy Yarborough lost any chance of victory when he made an extended pit stop after 185 miles. He was idle for about seven minutes and fell far out of contention. The day's only serious accident occurred when Buddy Arrington of Martinsville, Virginia, crashed into the retaining wall after blowing his engine. Arrington suffered a cracked rib. Hamilton led for only 13 laps, but he took the lead for good with nine laps remaining and held off the determined Pearson. Hamilton was a standout on the NASCAR Grand Touring Circuit last year. He had 12 victories in 26 races. Before today, he competed in only three Grand National races. His largest previous paycheck was $3,000 for a fifth-place finish in the Atlanta 500. Hamilton made it clear shortly after winning the world's richest stock car race today that victory wouldn't have been possible without the help of veteran driver Richard Petty. Hamilton won the $204,000 race in a Plymouth Superbird built by the Petty Racing Stable at Randleman, North Carolina. He credited the older Petty with teaching him a book full about race driving. Hamilton spent countless hours in the Petty garage to learn more about his car. Last year, the young driver won 12 races on a Chevrolet Camaro on the NASCAR Grand Touring Circuit. He said he was confident of winning today when he passed David Pearson with eight laps to go. Hamilton told newsman one of the big factors in his victory was removal of two body weights on the right side of his car after 250 miles. He said it kept the car from edging toward the wall at 200 miles an hour. Here are the standings of the top 20 in the Daytona 500. Again, Hamilton first, Pearson second, Bobby Allison third, Charlie Glassback fourth, Bobby Isaac fifth, Richard Brickhouse with sixth, followed by Jim Herdebees, Ramos Stote, Leroy Yarborough, David Marses, Ray Elder, Neil Castles, Tiny London 13th, followed by Benny Parsons, Friday Hassler, Roy Main, John Sears, and 18th, Cuckoo Marlin, 19 was Richard Brooks, and not to number 20 was Frank Warren. ABC's Lou Broder reports on the National Indoor Tennis Championships in Salisbury, Maryland. Romania's Illy Nassasi on the edge of the season of fourth set in the National Indoor Tennis Championships. Wore down Cliff Ritchie and won the national title. Ritchie has taken the first two sets, Nassasi the third. Ritchie twice was a point away from victory in the fourth set, but Nassasi held six to fourth and wiped out Ritchie's sixth love for the clincher. The victory was worth $7,200 to Nassasi, $3,200 to Ritchie. Frank Olson asked Nassasi if today's win was a bigger thrill than being in the Davis Cup Challenge round. Well, I think he's a great thing. How do you like those extra $4,000 coming your way today? Well, uh, I don't pay for money. I pay for, uh, you know, just to beat and uh, to have a good name in tennis. Illy Nassasi and Rich Hugh lost the last nine games to Nassasi and the match was asked if he ever lost a string of games like that before. Well, I start to remember every match. I did that once about five years ago in the final of a tournament. Uh, I can't recall it happening to me. It's uh, one of those things. But I thought I'd come back in the fourth, and I almost did. I was one point away, but uh, that's past history. A disappointed Cliff Ritchie, the runner-up in the National Indoor Tennis Championship. A report from Lou Boda of ABC. Young Ron Ceruto won the $100,000 San Antonio, Texas Open Golf Tournament. Ceruto fired a 200 par 68 in the final round and won by five strokes with a 272-hole total of 273. It's the second victory for the 25-year-old Californian in his pro career of about three years. 
Dick Lott finished second with 278 total. He played the final round with Ceruto and also fired a 68. There was a tie for third at 279 between Rod Funseth and Miller Barber. Funseth, who was in second place at the start of the round, shot a 70. Barber had a 68. Three more strokes back at 282 were former PGA champion Al Guyberger and John Schley. Guyberger matched par with a 70 in the final round, while Schley had a 71. The tournament was plagued by bad weather for its four days, and most of today's action was played in a cold rain. The course was muddy by the time Ceruto and the later starters came in. Ceruto took a four-stroke lead in the final round, but at one time his edge dwindled to a single stroke. Lots closed the gap with three consecutive birdies, but Lots cooled off, bogeyed the six-hole, and made the turn two strokes behind Ceruto. It never got close again. Ceruto pulled ahead of stay with birdie threes on the 14th and 15th holes. Pre-tournament favorite Lee Trevino finished far back at 287. He had a 70 in the final round. Defending champion Dean Beeman managed a closing 68, but he finished down the list with a 290. U.S. Open champion Orville Moody was bracketed at 283 with Dave Stockton, Kermit Sarley, and Chris Blocker. Burt Green won the international golf tournament in Bogota, Colombia by four strokes. A 70 in the final round gave Green a 72-hole total of 268. Dickie Thompson finished second after shooting a 74 in the final round. Billy Casper was far back with a 280 total. This Wednesday, officials of the two big postseason college basketball tournaments will fill out their schedules. The National Collegiate Athletic Association moves first. 15 of the 25 teams that participate in their tournament automatically are determined by conference championship. When it comes to the 10 at-large invitations, the NCAA will be competing with the National Invitation Tournament, which picks 16 teams. Both tourneys are considering Niagara and St. John's. The NIT likes to pick several strong teams from the New York area to build up local interest for the games at Madison Square Garden. Niagara would rather play in the NIT, but All-American Calvin Murphy says they definitely would accept an NCAA bid. St. Bonaventure is fourth ranked in the nation and the top independent team. They are certain to get one of the three at-large berths in the NCAA Eastern bracket. Niagara, St. John's, Villanova, and Duquesne will be out for the other two. St. John's most likely will be passed over for the NCAA this year because they've been there three straight seasons. The NIT's strongest entries probably will be second-place finishers in various conferences. The Atlantic Coast Conference has four fine teams, three of them rated in the top 20. Since only the champions can go to the NCAA, then the NIT might get two. The Missouri Valley Conference also should provide a strong team for the NIT, but the Big Ten forbids more than one team playing in postseason games. That naturally is the conference champ in the NCAA. One team the NIT would like is Louisiana State and the phenomenal Pete Maravich. If the Tigers finish high in the Southeastern Conference, there's a good chance that they'll go. In college basketball today, Duquesne 105, Boston College 72. That's the only major college game played. Freddie Hetzel of the 76ers is hospitalized in Cincinnati for observation of a possible appendix ailment. Hetzel was stricken with severe stomach pains before today's game with the Royals and was taken to the hospital by ambulance. Can you believe it? The Baltimore Bullets beat the New York Knicks today. Win Elliott of CBS talked with Bullet Vice President Joe Sachs. In NBA basketball, Baltimore 110, New York Knicks 104. And like DP Joe Sachs of the Bullets told me, it's been a long time. This is our first win of this year, win going back to uh, the playoffs of last year. New York had beaten us nine straight. Well, how do you Baltimore folks feel, Joe? It's beautiful. We got some great performances individually from uh, a couple of our ball players. It's just, uh, it's just a real happy day for us. I think we got to the point where it almost becomes psychological with the, the Colts and the, uh, the Mets and, uh, and what's happened to Baltimore and New York the past year or so. I know. Well, what was the difference this afternoon? Well, I think the, the one thing that we've been lacking against New York uh, in the past few games sort of gelled for us today, and that was our defense. Uh, we did a little switching on our, on our personnel and had uh, Jack Marin playing Fraser on defense, and he did an outstanding job. Uh, I think that might have been the key to the game. That report from Wynn Elliott of CBS and other National Basketball Association games today. It was Seattle 131, San Francisco 127, Detroit 116, Atlanta 114, Cincinnati knocked off Philadelphia 136 to 116, Milwaukee 144, Phoenix 124, and the Lakers behind Elgin Baylor's 39 points, 108 to the Boston Celtics 96. In the American Basketball Association, Carolina 101, New York Nets 97, the Denver Rockets 113, New Orleans Buccaneers 107, Kentucky 151, Miami 128, 
and Washington 135, Los Angeles 128. In the National Hockey League, it was Chicago's Blackhawks 6, Boston Bruins 3, San Marquita picked up 4 points, Montreal shut out Detroit 1 to nothing, and it was New York 5, Toronto Maple Leafs 3. In the American Hockey League, ties, ties, and more ties. Montreal 2, Quebec 2, Hershey and Cleveland played to the same score, Providence and Baltimore 1-1, one, one, and Buffalo scored a defeat 6-4 to four over Rochester. The Australian yacht Carabella won today's fourth heat of the 5.5 meter World Yacht Championships near Sydney, Australia. Dave Forbes sailed the Carabella to a 15 second victory over the American yacht Nemesis. He also won yesterday's heat. The Australian yacht now has 10 points and is a clear leader in the championships. The United States took the first and second positions in the first runs of the Kennedy International Bobsled Competition at Lake Placid, New York. The number one U.S. lead followed by Harry Peterson had the two best heats to grab first place. The number two U.S. lead, driven by Les Fenner, had the third best run of the day and took second place. The final two runs are tomorrow. Irving Crane officially won the World Pocket Billiards Tournament at Los Angeles yesterday in the two virtually meaningless matches. Crane down Richie Florence and Luther Wimpy Laster to wrap up the tournament. He already clinched the crown, his fifth since 1942. The baseball at the Washington Baseball Awards Center last month, astronaut Colonel Frank Borman was asked to present Hank Aaron with the National League Player of the Year Award. Since you are all baseball fans, it would be perfectly redundant for me to stand up here and extol the capability of, of Hank Aaron. Uh, I have watched him in the Astrodome with anguish on many times. I have had the good fortune of meeting him prior to this evening, and of course I was able to talk to him tonight. So it's a, a real thrill and a great honor for me to be able to present him with this award. So it's, uh, with a great deal of personal pride, I'd like to present this to you, Hank. Thank you very much, Carl. Reverend Clergy platform guests, ladies and gentlemen. They said behind every successful man as a woman, this is what Sinatra said, so it got to be true. <laughs> I would say the same thing holds true in an organization. You've met the uh, president of our club, Mr. William Bartholomew, and I'd like to introduce a gentleman I hold very dear to my heart, our traveling secretary, Don Davidson. I've been privileged to have received a few awards during my baseball career, but being presented this honor tonight by Colonel Gorman has to be one of the greatest thrills of my life. I want to thank the Washington Chapter Baseball Writers for making this possible and making it possible for Colonel Gorman to present me this award. Thank you very much. That from Henry Aaron of the Atlanta Braves. Denny McLean will be 26 years old next month. He says he's done a lot of living and had a lot of experience. And a lot of that experience has come in the past few days. There was a conference with baseball commissioner Bowie Kuhn, then an article in a national magazine, Sports Illustrated, accusing him of having gambling connections in the past. An appearance before a federal grand jury in Detroit, and another conference with Kuhn to announce his indefinite suspension from organized baseball. McLean, the pitcher who won 31 games for the Detroit Tigers in 1968, isn't bitter. He said the magazine article was absurd and ridiculous, but he said Kuhn did the right thing to suspend him, while he investigates the charges. McLean admits he is broke when he says his financial troubles all stem from business dealings. He said he hired an agency to handle his affairs and hopes this will be the answer. McLean refused to discuss the allegations against him. The magazine said he and a soft drink executive backed a bookmaking operation in Flint, Michigan back in 1967. McLean said since Kuhn and the grand jury are investigating, it would be improper for him to comment. The suspension means McLean cannot work out with his teammates during their spring training practice at Lakeland, Florida. The other Tigers are not bitter, at least not openly. First baseman Norm Cash said, I just don't know how a man could get himself so in much trouble in so short a time. Manager Mayo Smith expressed sorrow for McLean and his family. Smith said his team still could win the pennants, but he admitted it would be hard to make up 24 games, referring to McLean's victories last season. Smith says he feels McLean's suspension eventually will be lifted and will continue as a ball player. But meanwhile, Denny McLean probably has more living and more experience in front of him. And that's sports. Army Specialist Larry Green in Saigon.
Our Love Girl, 1964, with Diana Ross and her Supremes. Of course, that was back in the days when they were just uh, plain old Supremes and doing a good job of it, too. Music power! 10.35 on the Big V of the station that reinvented much more music. Most of the time when you listen to this station, we entertain you. Hi-ho! And on my right... Well, right now, we are not. We have a serious problem. It's called Connex. There are many Connex containers here in Vietnam which are very good bunkers and latrines. We aren't worried about these. We're worried about the others which can be used for their original purpose as cargo containers. At this time, there is a worldwide shortage of Connex containers, and we need to find out whether the ones you have can be repaired and returned to the transportation system. This inventory is from now until the 26th of this month, and it is a one-shot deal. We need your help. Okay, Perkins, the Army can be great for you. Some of the MOSs have as much as $10,000 VRB. Comrade Wynn, if you re-enlist in VC Army, we give you 25 piasta and two bag of rice. Station of choice option in CONUS, Perkins. That can really mean a lot to a young family man like yourself. Comrade Nguyen, you can choose your next duty station, DMZ or Mekong Delta. And Perkins, you can re-enlist and be trained in any Army specialty you want. No, so what, Comrade Wen? You want to change your MOS? You can. You want to be supper? You'll be supper. Well, what do you say, Perkins? You want to give it a try? Okay, Comrade Wen. Are you ready to re enlist? You have one minute to decide. Your future, your decision. Stay Army. Not, Not you, you, Charlie. Charlie. ASB Music Power! Music power from 1967 on MDM for a Monday evening, the association. And never, never, my love. You ask me if I come a when I grow tired of you. Never, my love.
67, and the association that's called Never My Love. Music power! 10.40 on the Big VN, and tomorrow the Big VN presents proudly at 4.05, Town and Country, with Army Sergeant Bill Clark, who have the best in the old uh, country music for you there, so be sure and turn them in there, buckaroos. Army Specialist Tony Lyons from now until 11 o'clock. You know, whole baggage is something that you don't want to lose track of, right? Since it's usually something pretty valuable, unless you're going to send home old rocks and trees and things. Now, if you've lost some of yours, there's an easy way to find it. How? Well, check with the Personal Property Division, Consonant Air Base, APO in Country. Here comes the important part, 96243. Uh, That's what I said. Million-dollar music from 1969, Crimson and Clover. Here's million-dollar music, 1903, friends. just like the woman next door. If you live next door to Sophia Loren, Elka Summers, or Jane Mansfield, yes, this is a story that helps you understand why a woman believes that if you charge something, it's not spending. If you put a lime in it, it's not intoxicating. Now, here is the woman who does not think of men all the time, but when she thinks, she thinks of men. Here is Helen Trump. Around the corner and up 
your street, we bring you another chapter in the return of Helen Trump. A chapter entitled, She Was a Miss by a Mile. Let's stroll down the path and enter Helen's house. The little house that has a terrific view, if you don't look out the window. Yes, there's Helen now. A real chug-chug girl. A go-go girl who is past 30. Her lower lip is thrust out in a provocative pout. Our gal Tuesday Wednesday has been giving her trouble again. She has been flirting with Helen's latest romantic interest, C. Dewey Detterwick, the first man to strike oil at Lakeside with a four iron. The first time Helen met C. Dewey, she suspected he had something up his sleeve, probably a lace hanky. But as she grew to know him better, she realized that he was really the Tarzan type. His eyes swung from limb to limb. What Helen does not know is that Dewey has only three weeks to live. Then his wife is coming back from Palm Springs. What Dewey likes about Tuesday, Wednesday is beyond Helen, and quite a bit beyond Tuesday, Wednesday. But then it is obvious that Dewey is not the intellectual type. He's the kind of man who thinks a zebra is the largest a woman can buy. As these thoughts passed through Helen's mind, she became aware of strong arms encircling her, and then a voice racked with seething emotions speaks to her. Oh, Helen. Oh, Helen. You ravishing temptress. You must accept my, my affection, my devotion. And, Helen, please don't believe all of the rumors you hear about me. My wife never understood me. It was a good thing she didn't. Why, she gave me one night each week to go out with the boys. But I was too smart to waste it on boys. And so, friends, we've come to the close of another chapter in the romance of Helen Trump. A chapter that has left us with this lesson. A career girl's mind moves her ahead, while a starless mind moves her behind. Be with us again tomorrow when this program, Helen Trump, again asks the question, can a woman after 35 find love and romance? Well, goodbye, friends, for the day. Fifty-nine with the crest that they sing their big nugget seller in those days called Sixteen Candles. Sing it.
1959, that's the crest. And 16 candles are the big V in. A type A R and R through the eyes of the fifth dimension. Get a good part of the Dimension, a type A R and R, and you together. It's 10:54. These are the Beach Boys for you from 19 and 60. Uh, six, I think it was. John B. with the Beachy Boys right there. we got to wrap it up. We're going to play this one for our old in-crowd partner, Cannonball. Cannonball's out there doing his thing, and we're going to play this one for him. But don't be great. 1965. I'm in with the in-crowd.
Let's go, Jay. We'll see you tomorrow night on Million Dollar Music for a Tuesday. In the meantime, take real good care of yourself. Bye now. Ladies and gentlemen, Army Specialist Tony Lyon was here. We got our own way of talking here. Yeah. This is the American Forces Vietnam Network. This is Radio 54, AFBN, Saigon. Malaria is common in Vietnam. It's a souvenir that you don't want to take home. Take precautions against this disease and the mosquitoes that carry it. Take the anti-malarial pills and use the insect repellent whenever possible. Bill's repellent and common sense about malaria will make your Devos easier. It's 2300 hours, action urged to curb airline terrorism. AFBN News, compiled from commercial and military news agencies. Good evening, this is Army Specialist Phil Henry. Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir has urged 19 foreign diplomats to press their governments to take action to stop attacks on civilian aircraft. The move follows the crash in Switzerland of a Swiss airplane Saturday in which 47 persons, including 15 Israelis, died. The Israelis claim the plane bound for Israel was blown up by Arab saboteurs. The pilot of the plane reported an explosion on the craft just before it crashed after it had taken off from Zurich. Swiss authorities are investigating to see if sabotage actually was involved in the crash. Associated Press reports U.S. sources say North Vietnamese and Papat Lao troops may be heading for an important government position in Laos. The sources say the enemy attacked an outpost on the route to Muang Sui, where a Laotian air base is located. It was not known if the enemy troops captured the outpost or pulled back. The outpost is on the western edge of the Plain of Jars, the strategic area the North Vietnamese and Papat Lao seized during the weekend. Another communist attack was reported in Laos today, that on the border with Thailand. And that report from Associated Press. President Nixon has called a meeting of the National Security Council later today. The council is expected to discuss Laos, the proposed sale of jets to Israel, and the visit of French President Pompidou, who has left Paris for a nine-day visit to the United States. He meets tomorrow with President Nixon. Pompidou's visit originally was planned as a goodwill tour, but protests over the French sale of jets to Libya is likely to upset this goal. Israeli Foreign Minister Abba Eben met today in Bonn with West German Foreign Minister Schell. He's to talk later with other German officials, including Chancellor Billy Brandt. Yugoslav President Tito arrived in Egypt today and was greeted by President Nasser. Tito has just completed a visit to the Sudan. In Japan, a massive preventive action campaign is going on in the shipbuilding industry. David Willis of Group W News in Tokyo tells why. Japan suffered a dent in its seafaring pride recently when a 60,000-ton oil carrier sank off its east coast in the same patch of water that had claimed one other large Japanese carrier and two more ships in the past 13 months. Now the Japanese are taking two remedial actions as a result. The first is to reinforce ballast tanks in the bow sections of 69 other ships, each weighing more than 50,000 tons. Japan will also ask other countries if similar ships of theirs should be reinforced. The second measure is an order by the Director General of the Japan Self-Defense Forces for the Maritime Self-Defense Force, or Navy, to be faster off the mark in responding to distress calls. This is David Willis in Tokyo. A sudden thaw has caused flooding from overflowing rivers in West Germany. Some sections of the Rhine are closed to boat traffic, and flooding is reported in Bayreuth and Heidelberg. Four persons were killed today when an avalanche destroyed an inn in the Austrian Alps. The inn was at St. Sigmund near Innsbruck. School teachers in Kentucky have called a statewide strike today for higher wages and more fringe benefits. They've asked for a $600 raise over two years. The legislature has offered $300. In Washington, five amendments to the Southern-sponsored school lunch bill are expected to come up for a vote in the Senate today. South Dakota Democrat George McGovern, sponsor of the amendments, says the current bill favors the South. 